6, verse 6, so, so Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant and have seven priests carry seven trumpets. I'm sorry, Joshua 1, chapter 6. Take up the ark of the covenant and have seven priests carry seven trumpets made of ram's horn's head of the ark of the Lord. He said to the people, go forward, march around the city, and let armed men go ahead of the ark of the Lord. Verse 8 says, and it was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets made of ram's horns went on before the Lord and blew the trumpets. Then the ark of the covenant of the Lord went behind them. Verse 9 says, the armed men went in front of the priests who blew the trumpets. And the rear guard came after the ark, which the priests continued to blow the trumpets. Verse 10 says, but Joshua commanded the people, you shall not shout the battle cry, nor let your voice be heard, nor let a word come out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. Verse 11 says, so Joshua had the ark of the Lord taken around the city on the first day, circling it once. Then they came back to the camp and spent the night in the camp. Verse 12 says, then Joshua got up early in the morning on the second day, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. Verse 13 says, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets made of ram's horns, uh, horns ahead of the ark of the Lord went on continually, blowing the trumpets. And the armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests continued to blow the trumpets. Verse 14 says, on the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. Then on the seventh day, they got up early at daybreak and they marched around the city in the same way seven times. Only on that day they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. I've heard many messages on what the conversations must have been like as the people marched around the wall. What were the people outside the wall thinking? What were the people inside the wall thinking? However, I'm not here to, to, to debate or to discuss that today. What I want to talk about and what I choose to believe is that what happens when a group of people come together on one accord and want to accomplish serving God, what can happen? Absolutely everything is possible when people walk in alignment and unity for one cause. Have God with them in their immunity. They have to trust their leader. First, people have to have faith that going around the wall even once was a good thing. Yeah. They have to have seven priests accompany them with the Ark of the Covenant and the people along with the seven blaring trumpets. They marched around Jericho one time for six days. But on the seventh day, they marched around the wall of the city seven times. And on the seventh time around, they shouted, the walls came tumbling down. Each day, the people marching was a step of faith. See, they really didn't know how this was going to end. They just know what they were told, and they believed what they were told. So they had to wait and see. So they were blindly following, obeying a man who had heard from the Lord. You're saying, Pastor Ray, what are you saying? I'm saying faith and obedience were closely aligned here. Both have to occur for this to work. Because Jericho is just the first city that they needed to conquer. Come on. Uh, they went on and they needed to, to win 12 more battles after that. But this just happened to be the first. And God said, I, you know, I know that, that this may be a huge, insurmountable task that I have in front of you, but I have bigger and better things ahead of you. God said, I can take care of that if you all get on one page. God said, I have a plan. And guess what? This wall is in the way. Surrounded by a 28 foot tall wall, six foot wide, stone. And God gave the leader, Joshua, some very detailed fighting instructions to be able to get into Jericho. So I could see them. They're taking that first lap. See, it takes a huge amount of courage to obey. But the only way God can fight for us is if we follow his instructions first. Yo, I hear you. I'll take another lap. Uh, Lord, Lord, I believe in my heart that this was promised to me. Yes, it was promised to you. But guess what? I need you to take another lap. Because just because of the promise, I still need you to walk and move forward. So take another lap. Okay, Lord, now I'm on lap number three. Lord, say, I just know that obedience is better than sacrifice. You're absolutely right. Yes, Lord, I did hurt you. Great, I'm glad you hurt me. Now, guess what? Hear me again. Take another lap. Yeah. Now, on lap number four, and I remember an old school song says, I went into the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. God said, I remember that too. Now, guess what? Take another lap. 
and now we on lap number five. And saying, for I know the plans that I have for you to give you a hope in the future. God saying, all right, you do know that, but guess what? I need you to take another lap. Now we on lap number six. It says, I walk by faith and not by sight. This these walls may still be erected, but God said, I know, but I need you to see. And what I've already promised you, and now that I've already promised you, you can see, but God said, take another lap. Okay, God, lap number six. I walk by faith and not by sight. But on this last lap, after you've been obedient, after you've honored what God told you to honor, God said, okay, now, now your faith is getting a little bit more mature and you're understanding that I have a bigger and better plan for your life. God said, okay, now you take another lap, but now I shout unto God with a voice of triumph. God said, that's what I was looking for, for you to be in proper alignment, to be in unity. And once you take that lap, guess what? The walls came tumbling down. When they all worked together in unity, their faith was strengthened. God, I can see it now. Because they showed it to Job, they showed it to Joshua. But now the people are marching around, they're able to see it too. God saying, I have something perfect for you, a plan for you. Point number five. You have to go take the city. But here's the thing. You must read one verse further than when the walls came tumbling down. Many times we stop right there. Joshua chapter 6 verse 21 says, Then they utterly destroyed everything that was in the city. Both man, woman, young and old, ox, sheep, donkey with the edge of the sword. Wait, you telling me it doesn't stop me? When the walls came down, you're telling me that I, I, I've already praised, I already shouted, I already did all this work, I got everyone all in the line, you tell me there's still work to be done? God said, do you want the promise or do you not want the promise? God said that just because it's right there, do you expect me to go ahead and put it in your lap? God said, no, I told you to go out there and take the city. God said, there's an action that needs to take place and I need only you to go there and grab what God has for you. God said, oh, okay, if you're not willing to go grab it, then it's just going to sit there and you'll sit there being frustrated, saying, what God has for you. Say, why can I not take it? God said, because you did not possess it. It's there for you to possess it. God said, I'm telling you to go take the city. Take the city. But you cannot have a promise without taking possession. Just because God promised it does not mean that your enemy will just hand it over. Okay, you knocked down our walls, but guess what? We still gonna have to fight. You better have your sword ready. Because just because you knocked down my wall does not mean I'm gonna run and hide. Are you prepared to fight? Yeah. Are you just okay with just having one form of victory? God saying, I don't want you to have one form of victory. I'm not interested in you just being healed. I want you to be made whole. I'm not interested in just the symptom and saying, okay, God, we can shout because the walls came tumbling down and everyone loves that part, but that's the part that we're missing right here. After you've had that victory, after you've seen the manifestation, after you've seen what God can do, God say, okay, I've done it. You see me do the impossible. Now it's back on you to do what you only you can do. Take possession. You have to take possession because it belongs to you. It's yours. No one can take it for you. You want everything that God has for you, guess what? Get up and go get it. Like I said earlier, because of what God has for you is for you. Go take the city. Look at your neighbor and say, go take the city. Lisa, you can come. Go take the city. You prayed. You heard from the Lord. You followed the plan. You were obedient. You acted. And now you must go take the city. Yes, yes, yes. What area of your life feels like it's a fortified wall that keeps you defeated? I ask you to ask God to show you in the explicit steps that will lead you to freedom in your life. We've been telling you don't quit fighting. Why? Because there's still work that needs to be done. Yes, we've seen a measure of success. 
But God saying that's just one level. Stop settling just at that one level. God saying that if you are at the other end of this miracle that I want to do, there's more levels that I want to take you to. Don't limit what God. See, the only thing that limits God is our capacity for us to trust Him. And for Him to have rule and reign and move in our life. The more that you let go of your own agenda, your own way, and completely sell out to the king, to the king, then you can see God do exploits on your behalf. You can't want him to do something great in your life if you're not willing to do and put it in the work necessary. Getting out of your own way, out of your own mind, realizing that I have to have faith, I have to have trust, I have to get a vision, which is a kingdom's assignment, which is much bigger than what's going on with my four and no more. And take possession of it. Because God will do miraculous things. But the thing, guess what? Why, Joshua couldn't take the city by himself. Everyone had to buy in to go and take the city. Marching around was not enough. That was, not, that was just one of the requirements. And I'm telling you that I applaud you. I applaud everybody who walks around and marches around the city. But what was promised to them was on the other side of those, that tumbling wall. So I talked about having a vision. Making sure we stick to the script. Obedience precedes, precedes opportunities. God, we said that when it's time to move, Lord, we'll move. And God said, if I can get y'all guys aligned, guess what? It's time to go take the city. And everything on the other end, end of that. And there's so much more that I can talk about. About how the additional battles were fought. In. They won them all but one, but then went back and won that one again later. Dr. Lee, I think she mentioned this two Sundays ago, saying that there's going to be some times where we're going to have some trials and tribulations in our life. But I know scripture talks about being of good cheer. And I want us to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice today. Who's saying, who feel like they're just on the verge of what God has said. I know God has been speaking to them. You guys have been fasting. You guys have been praying. You guys uh, hear from God. And if you feel like you're just on the verge of what God has for you. I want you to consider a few things. Is there something back there that's left undone that God's saying only you can do? before you can move forward. There's some things that we have to get right. And God's saying before you move forward, you can't move forward if there's something in the back in the past that you have something that you have to tend to. Because God told Joshua, hey, when your brothers have rest and they're set up, God, look, God, let me get let me get me set up first. Because once I get me set up first, I get my stuff taken care of, then I'll worry about this. I'll worry about what's going on at the church. I'll worry about kingdom business. You know, God say, no. Everything that I have for you is available. But here's the keys on the other side of your obedience. So we talked about don't quit. Keep fighting. And when you don't quit and you keep fighting, God is able to do miraculous things in your life. If everyone across this building, if you could stand to your feet. With every head bowed, every eye closed. There's two sets of people that I want to pray for today. I'm going to kindly ask you to slip your hand if you fall into any one of these categories. If you've already seen what God has for you, but you've not taken possession of it, I ask you to kindly slip your hand in there so I can see you. I 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 see you. Amen. You may put your hands down. If you know that you've been struggling in trusting the plan that God has, if you've been struggling in, your, in the area of being obedient to what God has called you to do, I ask you to kind of slip your hand up. And, I see you. 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 Put your hands down. So the great.
great news is, is that what God has in store for us, that we have the opportunity to achieve and obtain that right now. Let us pray as a family. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, for your people as I stand here in front of your sons and your daughters, God. Lord, I'm thankful for the ones that you've already gave a vision, Lord, knowing what they should be doing, God. Lord, I ask you to send your Holy Spirit right now, Lord, and make them uncomfortable with settling for less than your very best, God. Lord, the dream, the vision, the talent, the time, the treasure you've gave them is not to be sitting on the shelf. But Lord, for them to tap in to what you have for them. Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit to reveal everything that's undone in our past that needs to be rectified and, 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 and dealt with. So that way we can move forward and take possession of everything that you have for us. Because God, we trust you. We love you, God. We just want you to be pleased with our life. somewhere in this message realizing that Lord with you all things are possible so Lord I speak to every Jericho that is erected in their life right now every evil scheme that the enemy has tried to resurrect in their life making it seem like it is impossible Lord in our own strength it is impossible Lord but with you all things are possible Lord we speak to those things that we've allowed 